Dear classmates, welcome to the last video of logic simulation. In this video, we are going to discuss two detailed implementation issues of the logic simulator, hazard and the oscillation. First, let's review the quiz question in our last video. In our quiz, we had this problem. At time zero, we have a rising transition at input B and then a rising here and a rising here and a falling here. At output K, we have a rising at time 18 followed by a falling at time 22. So it is very strange that we only have one single input change but the output toggle twice. So what was the problem? This is what we call a hazard, which was studied intensively by Hoffman and the McCluskey's research team in 1960s. A hazard is an output signal waveform that depends on either the internal circuit delay or the external input signal change. There are two types of hazard. Static hazard is a momentary change of gate output that does not cause the steady gate output to change. For example, in this figure, the static value is 1 and we have a very short pulse to 0. This is what we call a static 1 hazard. On the contrary, we can have a static zero hazard. The steady output is zero, but we have a very short pulse to one. The second type of hazard is dynamic hazard. We are supposed to have a rising or falling transition, but we have a momentary change of the signal. For example, Dynamic one hazard means that we have a rising to one transition, but we have a very short momentary change of the signal. And dynamic zero hazard is similar. In this video, we are going to focus only on the static hazard. So why do we have hazard in the circuit? There are two reasons. Reason number one is called logic hazard. That means a signal change reconverge with different timing. For example, for this circuit we have one signal change which propagates through two paths. The upper path is longer. The path delay is a nanosecond. The lower path however is shorter, only 4 nanosecond. So, the shorter path will cause rising transition first at the K output, and then the longer path will cause a falling transition later at the K output. So, we will see a momentary change to 1, and then it falls back to 0. The second reason is function hazard. For function hazard, it is caused by more than one input change. For example, for this simple end gate, we have a rising transition at the one input and a falling transition at the other input. Because there could be a very short time when both inputs are one. The output can potentially have a static zero hazard. So in summary, logic hazard is caused by the circuit structure. It can be improved by changing the circuit design. However, function hazard is not caused by the circuit structure. So it cannot be improved by changing the circuit design. 
So why do we have to worry about hazard? When we test a circuit, we need to consider hazard because hazards affect our test timing. For example, suppose we want to test this circuit. We apply two test patterns, 100 and 110. At the output, we would expect a zero. That means no signal change. However, our test result can be influenced by hazard. On the tester, we need to specify a short time, which means the time to observe the circuit output. For this specific example, if we observe output K at time 16, the circuit passed the test because the expected value is zero and the observed value is also zero. However, if we test the circuit and the show time is 20, then it will fail the test because the observed value will be one due to the hazard. Again, if we set the strobe time to be 24, this circuit will pass the test again. So we can see that the test result is dependent on the test timing. So we need to consider the hazard so that we can decide the test timing. So how can we detect the hazard? Of course, we can use event-driven simulation, but it's computationally very expensive. The six-value simulation has been proposed to detect potential static hazard. In the six-value simulation, we use zero to represent static zero, one to represent static one, R to represent rising transition from 0 to 1, F to represent a falling transition from 1 to 0, and the 0 star represents a static 0 hazard. 1 star represents a static 1 hazard. For this end gate, for example, suppose one of the input has a rising transition and the other input has a falling transition. On this six value choose table, we can see that the output would be one star, which means a potential static zero hazard at the output. Please note that the six value simulation cannot determine for sure if there is a hazard or not. The six value simulation can only indicate potential hazard. For example, for this end gate, whether the output has a hazard or not depends on the arrival time of the rising transition and the falling transition. If the rising transition is early and the falling transition is late, in that case, we have overlap. In this case, we have hazard. Otherwise, if the rising transition is late and the falling transition is early, in that case, we may not have hazard. Now it's time for you to have a quiz. Please fill in this six value choose table for nor gate. You have nine blanks to fill in. Are you done yet? Now, here are our answers. For this nor gate, if one of the input have a rising transition and the other input has a falling transition, then we may have a static zero hazard 
at the output. Another example is that if we have a static zero hazard at one input and static zero hazard on the other input, we could have static one hazard at the output. Have you got them correctly? Now we will apply the six value simulation on the example circuit again. We have a rising transition at input B after this OR gate. We have a rising transition at G1 output. For this end gate, one of the input is 1, the other input is rising, so the output of G2 is a rising transition. After the inverter, the output of G3 is falling transition. According to the choose table, we can see that the output of a NOR gate is 0 star, which means a static 0 hazard. So using the 6 value simulation, we can detect the potential hazard and the circuit output. Now it's time for you to do the quiz. Please run the 6 value simulation to determine whether there is a potential static hazard and output or not. Have you finished yet? Given the input 0, R1. The output of the OR gate is a rising transition and the output of this end gate is 0 because one of the input is static 0 and the output of the inverter is a falling transition. Finally, the output of K is a rising transition. Please know that there is no hazard because there is only one sensitized path. The upper path is static value. So only one propagation path from the signal input change to the output. So there is no hazard. Have you got it correctly? Now let's consider the second issue, oscillation. Before we work on the oscillation, please do this quiz. Given this circuit with cross-coupled NAND gates, please simulate the circuit using the event-driven algorithm with initial values S prime equal to 1, R prime equal to 1, and the Y equal to 0, R prime equal to 1. There is a falling transition at time 0 at input S prime and there is a rising transition at time 4 for the S prime. Now please finish this table and draw the output waveforms. Have you finished? This quiz is actually very tedious because we have many events going on in this simulation. First of all, G1 is activated, so we schedule an event Y1 at 3, followed by Y prime 0, followed by Y0, followed by Y1, and Y prime 1. After that, we would observe that the next four events are actually the same as the previous events. So the simulation just goes on and on, it never ends. If we draw the waveform, we would observe that Y is toggling between 1 and 0, 1 and 0. So same thing here for Y prime. It's a problem because this simulation goes on and on without ending. This is what we call oscillation. 
This pair of cross coupled NAND gate is actually an RS ledge with inverted inputs S prime and R prime. When S prime is zero, output Y is controlled to one. When R prime is zero, output Y prime is controlled to one. When both inputs are one, the latch remains its last state. Zero zero are forbidden input for the RS latch. From the waveform, we can see that a falling in the Y output would trigger a rising at the output Y prime, which will again trigger another falling at Y and uh, rising at Y prime. So this oscillation just goes on and on. It causes a problem for our logic simulator. So our simulator must stop this oscillation. Otherwise, we just waste a lot of time. But how can we stop it? The first solution is local oscillation control. By local, we mean that the feedback loop is inside a logic gate. For example, given this cross-coupled SR ledge, we can monitor a user-specified condition on the ledge. If we see Y and the Y prime equal to zero at the same time, that means there is something wrong and uh, we should force the output to be a known U. A second method is we can remodel this SR ledge. For example, we can use this new model to replace the cross-couple NAND gate. We add an extra gate G with a known input U. When both Y and Y prime are zero, the output of this OR gate will be a known. So that Y will be changed to a known and the uh, Y prime will be forced to a known. So that would stop the oscillation automatically. Another solution which is probably the best solution is to replace this by a SR ledge model. So that in our simulation we just handle it as a latch. The second solution is to have global oscillation control. By global, we mean that a feedback loop exists between more than one gate. For this example, given the input 1, and the zero, we have a loop of oscillation because we have three inverters in this loop. So the circuit would output an oscillation. So how can we control this problem? We can count the event occurring after any primary input change. If the number of events exists our specified limit, then the simulation has to stop and report a warning message to the user. This global feedback loop actually is a big problem also for the later test generation. In any case, the global feedback is a very bad design style from the test point of view. So it should be avoided in our design methodology. In conclusion, in this video, we introduce two types of hazard. They are static hazard and dynamic hazard. So there are two possible reasons for hazard. The logic hazard is caused by signal reconverge with different timing. 
and functional hazard is caused by multiple input change. We show that six value simulation can be used to detect potential hazard without a detailed event driven simulation. And we also show that isolation should be suppressed by the simulator. We show global and local isolation control techniques. In summary, logic simulator is a very important building block for many EDA tools. So we should understand the logic simulation very well after this class. Before we end this video, we have one FFT for you to think about. In our isolation slide, we show that this circuit would isolate in our simulator. But what would really happen in a real circuit with a cross couple NAND gate latch like this? This is an interesting question for you. Please think about it. Thank you.